Hello everyone, Cliff here in my shed. For quite a while I've wanted one of these. A little collet block. Just for putting flats and things on stuff on the uh, mill. So I wanted to make an ER32 collet block. And this is it. Now the more astute of you may have realised that this looks more like an ER25 collet block. And you'd be right. Because I made a few mess ups and ended up with an ER25 collet block. But if you want to see how I did it or didn't do it, stay tuned. The rest is to follow. Right, so first of all, I need 65 millimeters of this 2B2 steel. I bought on eBay, not too much money. So I blew it. Measure it and mark it. Gonna let this dry a bit more. And off to the bandsaw. Not cutting very square my saw at the moment. Damn, you can see the light through that. Probably not because I'm holding it too high. Anyway, it's not very square, but certainly make it certainly square than if I'd cut it by, by hand. Excuse me. Right, so now I'm going to mount this in the four jaw chuck and get a round on it to put the uh, thread on it for the call it older then we've got to bore it for the collet right let's get it mounted in a four door right, I'm just <coughs> putting my four door chuck in the uh, see, to be honest with you I don't use this very much this chuck it's not that I've got anything against four door chucks I think they're the most accurate chucks you can have this particular one isn't that great <coughs> Keep my eyes out for a decent one with this, but um, as I don't use it that often, and I'm not sure if the insides of these jaws will take the two inches. That we'll find out in a minute on the last one now. Now, like I say, I'm not that familiar with um, chucking up square stuff. So what I've done, I've just got a, I've found the centre of the block. I'm going to run that up there with a revolving centre. Myself sort of started, but it's not going to be anywhere near it. <sighs> now I put the key down somewhere. Right, I'll sort of nip these up a bit. Don't look disastrous, except that me. Um, Centre point weren't very good. I'll give that another go. I've ended up centre drilling that centre pop hole. Which I think is probably going to show up on the camera. I'm going to just try and line it up. Same like you would if you was doing a round bit of stock. Right, 
Looks like it's wobbling me uh, towel stock about a bit. Right, I'm gonna have to mess about with this a bit more. Don't really know how to do this with a gauge because get it out of there, but any slight movement, I suppose I could do it on the actual corners. I need to give this a bit more fault. Right, well, thanks to Abom79. If you've never had a look at that channel, have a look at it. I went down and uh, I had a look, and Adam at Abom79 has got a video doing exactly this. Um, I'm not going to try and explain it really, but basically, you get, you can do it by finding the low spot on one side and for me I'm zeroing that then going to the other side finding the low spot on there and I don't know if that's going to pick this up but these are half a foul the divisions on here so it's half a foul out there I'm just going to make sure there's a low spot yet so as soon as it starts increasing, you know you've got the low spot. Swing around to the other side. That could probably do with just another little squeeze. But I think I've got it as good as this lathe is going to get it now. So I'll try and put a link into ABOM79's tutorial on squaring up square stock, centering up square stock maybe, and you might notice I've turned it round because I'm going to drill another hole in it. Now it is centred for me um, towel stock to give it some support when I'm turning this off. I'm just going to centre drill it now. So this is a collet chuck I made some time ago. This one screws actually onto the headstock on the lathe. I'm just going to reproduce this. I'm just going to measure this off and round this off. Same distance as that's a little bit more. I might give myself a bit of a a bit of leeway with it, but that's the next job. And on this square stuff, I'm going to take it very steadily with my small tools. I'm going to notch where I want to go to. And very steadily turn this off. get this down to 40 mil so I ain't gonna film all that I'll put it back on again when I'm a bit closer he's chucking off loads of nasty hot little bits of shit I could do with one of Robert Zanudu's high tech shields
nearly round now. I think I need a sharp a bit. Rough measure, I'm only going to be just under 50 ish, so 48 and a half. So we'll get this down to 40. Nearly there. Another couple of passes, and a finished pass should do it. That's about eight foul over. I'm going to give it a spring cut. Get me micrometer out, I think. That is 40.15 millimeters. So I'll take another couple of foul off because I'm working in millimeters and thousandths here but I'd rather have it slightly undersized than over. very slightly under and if I let it cool down it'll probably be a little bit more under than that so I'm going to leave that for a minute and go and have a cup of tea <clears throat> so what with me um, handbook that I printed off the internet it's a 1.5 pitch thread I'm doing. The key to changing an Imperial mic with ML7 to a metric is this. This 21 tooth <coughs> driver. The other thing you have to do is never disengage the lead screw. You can't do it off of the um, dial indicator, the indicator. You just have to keep it engaged and reverse the lathe. So I'll get them set up and get ready for the uh, threading. So, just in case you're interested, we swapped this one with a 21 tooth <coughs> driver, which comes off the tumble. So we've got the 21 tooth driver. Then on this first stud, we've got Fifty tooth driven, well, it's a driver, 
<coughs> driven and then drive up because that's driving that. <coughs> that one is 45 tooth, then a 40 tooth on the actual lead screw. And that should give us one and a half millimeter pitch. Anyone who knows anything about an ML7 and is looking at this chart will know I've completely balls this up. And I'm about to waste an awful lot of me time. So this is how it should look. Driven, driver, idler, lead screw. <clears throat> there you go. Pratt. So before I get the uh, <clears throat> threading tool on here, I'm just going to give myself about a 40,000 relief somewhere for the thread to run out on. So this is completely ballsed up. I've got two options now. <clears throat> Chuck it away. Or uh, turn it into an ER25 collet chuck. Collet block. Because I've got an ER25 set, so I'm turn this down to 32. And make a ER25 collet block.
Amazing, isn't it? Do it right. And it works perfect. Right, well, I'm going to, have to take the chuck off now. I've got some other stuff to do. So, I'll sort out the angle I've got to bore this at and drill the holes. 15mm tall steel in here, which is ground and it's quite accurate. I've just got to call it over the top of it and it's just held in my free jaw chuck. It's all I'm really trying to do, it doesn't really matter, I'm just wanting this angle. When I bore it out when it's back on the chuck, this is my best gauge I've got, it's a bit of toil. And each of the divisions on here are half foul. Than a thousand run out on that. So I keep the compound slides fixed in that position, swap the four jaw back on here that's still got the, uh, the bit of metal that's going to be the ER25 now, call it holder, and see if I can bore it out. I'm just going to lock the carriage off now and bore this out until the collet fits. Probably grind it a bit with a little Dremel tool or something, but let's get it bored out first anyway. Should be somewhere close. Cut a few more, and then I'll uh, grind it.
too bad. Just a bit of um, mark steel, 15mm mark steel I've got in there. About two thousands out, which I think will be alright. It's not going to be a chuck after all. It's, um, it's really just for putting flats and holding stuff for milling. So that's it. Finally, this job is done. Even if it was supposed to be a ER32, now I've got an ER25. Oh well, say lovey. Till next time. Bye for now.